Hello everyone, this video is going to be about the new features in the latest version of Embroiderer. I haven't done a video in a while, so this is actually going to be catch up for several versions. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the new shapes menu. So the new shapes menu has circle, which was in the menu before, but now we have others. We have a polygon, star, Spiral, Heart, Quadrifoil, Tulip, etc. Now, what's important about these shapes is some of them actually have parameters. Right now, the parameters are set under the settings menu, and these defaults are generally good to go, but if you want a star with more points, for example, just change the number to something else. And now the star will have 10 points. You also notice that there's an inner part of the star and an outer part of the star. That's controlled by the object secondary points or the inner point star inner point scale. So it's just a percentage of the outer diameter. So if we were to set that to let's say a low value, and we drew the star. Now the star would look like that. Those Parameters also affect the polygon. Um, you can see that now we have a 10-sided polygon. But if you set it to, let's say, 4, which would be a square, because the square has four sides. Didn't do that correctly. Change it to 14. Um, let's change it to 4. And now, it's a square or a diamond, depending on how you orient the lines when you're sketching it. Okay, let's talk more about the parameters and shapes menus. Um, so I talked about the first two parameters, which affect the polygon star and spiral and the star inner point scale. The object width scale and the object secondary point scale apply to all the other objects, uh, heart all the way down to Hyptocroid, if I say that right. Um, so, for example, if we set the object width scale, which affects the width of the object, to let's say 0.5, which would be half of the width, um, we'll end up having a heart that's much narrower. And all the objects are just much narrower. So, when you get to the oval, it makes the oval much narrower than the standard. So that's um, useful for that. Then the other one that's interesting, and this might cause a lot of uh, knocking heads or scratching heads, um, is the object secondary point scale. Now what that does is it affects whatever is set here. So we have endpoints and control points. So we set the control points when we go and we do something like um, the oval again, now the oval has um, these control points are affected. Now, you wouldn't generally use the oval for that, but some of the other shapes end up being interesting. Um, the quadrifoil kind of turns into a clover. Actually, I should probably change the object width scale back to 1 for that demonstration. Um, the quadrifoil becomes now something that huh, doesn't look like a clover this time, does it? Anyway, you play around with the different values and you get different shapes. So if I go ahead and change this to something else. 
that is back changes to 0.5. Now when you do the quadrifoil, it ends up being like a flower. I set the value pretty high, um, so I could set, that was the end point effect. If I do the control point, it ends up being like that. You can see, so basically by changing many of these settings, You can get different effects on all the different features. I mean, that's a strange shaped um, paisley. Okay, let's talk more about these menu options. Um, so, hyptotrochord, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, um, opens up this dialog where we have various different approaches to hyptro chords. Um, we have a hyptro chord table, which basically what this is, is essentially similar to the wheels on a spirograph. So basically, this is like the first wheel, the one that would be the inner wheel, and then the second wheel, and then you could add a third wheel. Um, and what that does is it creates a different kind of pattern here. Now, what's neat about this is that the steps are the resolution as it draws around the circle to draw the hyptochord, just like you were using a spirograph with a little wheel, goes completely around. Um, it determines how many points it'll put down, and essentially these are lines for the graphics. So if you set the steps to lower values, you end up getting some interesting effects. Uh, if you set the steps higher, it uses more points and ends up being more rounded. Um, so that can be a lot of fun actually to, to, to use to kind of get different effects. So the speed effectively is changing the diameter of the wheels. Um, this is kind of a strange way of doing it. Um, I found the equations online for this particular one and I just thought um, it was kind of fun. Um, so you could see that basically you can create some neat patterns um, with this. And, you know, these lines would just be a complete line. So when you actually go ahead and draw, you know, what this is going to set the shape for you. Um, once you draw it later, um, you end up having this star shape. And that's kind of fun. And it's not really what a spirograph would do, but it's um, actually kind of fun. Another thing that we have in the new release is that if you play plus OK and continue, it'll just draw whatever last shape you had um, or last feature that you had, whether it's a line, curve, etc. But you can have a lot of fun with these points. So let's go back to the hyptochord menu and um, choose some of the other ones. So if we were to put another wheel on, let's say we made this wheel 9, uh, here, and then we made the speed double, 32, let's say, and then the phase would just leave zero. I don't really know how the phase really affects things, but um, yeah, and then we go there, we go up in steps. You can see we end up having a Hyptochroid within a hyptochroid, and if you change the values, you can end up getting some interesting stuff. Um, I did this before, and somebody said it looked like it was a snake, <laughs> which I guess it pretty much is. Um, so that's that. So we won't go and bother about drawing that. Let's go to the next menu. The next menu has some sliders that you can just adjust and you can get different types. So let's go up with the resolution. So you have that type which is kind of neat looking. Um, and so you change these parameters and it affects how the hyptochroid um, gets adjusted. Now I don't really have an explanation for 
all these parameters. You just have to play around with them and see what you end up liking. <clears throat> One of my favorite ones, um, so you just change this and you end up getting different types. Just play around with it until you get what you want. All right, so let's go, it's just repeating a lot, um, right, let's go to the rose. The rose is actually really fun. I like the rose. It's probably my favorite out of all these that are on here. Um, it's my favorite because it, it really, it really kind of is more intuitive than the others. Um, so basically, um, A and B are the two different wheel diameters in the spirograph. So this A is the outer wheel. And I you know in a future version I can have it scale automatically because this is kind of annoying. But um, so basically you can adjust these different parameters and you can get some different effects. So like here we have one that sort of has rounded points. But what really gets fun, I think is when you play around with the steps and you end up getting some really cool geometric shapes that aren't really circles. Well, there's even a star. Um, because of the resolution that you're choosing to, and you already got a star in the other menu, so this is not really needed, but um, you, know, you can get some really neat effects with this. So we go do that, let's say, um, change the right number of steps to other values. You can get some really neat geometric shapes that are a lot of fun. So, you know, there's one with a bunch of points. Um, you're going to want to adjust this. You can see that there's some strange um, non-uniformities here. So um, some of these, at, you adjust them until you get something that's nice. Now, so for example, that one is pretty uniform. Um, what ends up happening is that if this number, yeah, so the star. And I can adjust this, make this not fun, just to start with the points. So then basically, we have this object. You can see how fun these can be. I mean, you can make all sorts of these to represent f geometric flowers and have sort of a modern design in your embroidery. You know, there I've done some flowers. Now, I want to talk about a new feature that is in the software relating to points. Okay, there's new features in the point menu. I have drawn a triangle here, and you can see that the stitches uh, don't go on the endpoints. Now, this is the way the um, program's always been designed. Um, basically, what happens when stitches uh, occur is it essentially goes along the line, the exact uh, length of the stitches, and finds the next point. So then when it goes to a corner here, it's going along the line and then going down here and finding the next point. And so you can see that the point doesn't actually end up at the end, which generally is not desirable. Um, it's perfectly fine when you're drawing a, a curved line, because you want all these to kind of lay down nicely and the points, the end points, really don't matter in that case. But in the case of a geometric like this triangle, you really want them to. So under the point menu, we have a new feature called add anchor. So when you add an anchor, a little A goes there and you know that, that the points are going to anchor on those corners. So now that's perfect. And what the, this becomes very important um, when when you're doing other lines other than single, 
Well, it's important for single two, but when you do a hand stitch, for example, you can see that the hand stitches are nicely laid out. If you didn't have that in there, we can remove it by saying remove anchor. You'll see that the hand stitch, that one point there gets really wonky. It's just, it's just not so great. That one's pretty okay. I mean, it's just kind of like how things lay out. But by adding the anchors, you get nice uniformity. And I didn't do that right. I think I made a tangent. I didn't want to do that. Um, so we'll add the anchor here. Here. You can see it now lines up nice. Now it's really good for also when you do a stitch pattern because the stitch pattern then will be lined up with the ends that you want. So um, some of these stitch patterns are geometric. So, you know, now the fish are all on the lines. So that's good. The next point menu item I would like to discuss is tangents. So basically, you can see I drew a curve with um, control points, but I didn't make the endpoints line up with the curve. I mean, traditionally, um, we just go ahead and you know line them up and make the control handles tangent or in line with each other, which essentially is tangent. But you can go ahead under the point menu and add tangents to these lines, and now when you adjust the curve, the curve remains tangent. You can go and adjust the control points, ends up being tangent. Um, I use these occasionally. I find that sometimes uh, it's not really giving the effect I want, so I don't use the tangents very often. But under the point menu, there's also the ability to put tangents on the whole line at once by adding tangent to all curves. And when you do that, then you have tangents on all the points. Another point menu, new point menu item that I've added, um, which I've done this manually before by separating and joining curves, but now you can see the start and stop here is on the circle. So what if I wanted the start and stop to be at a different endpoint? I could do that by simply going and choosing move start stop to new endpoint, and it will move it there. Um, basically, it moves both points to this point. So if you had an open graphic, um, it will close it first, um, just, and then it will go ahead and join the endpoint. So um, join, it will join the, the original endpoints together and it'll move the endpoint to there. So just be aware that um, this generally only works well for closed graphics. Um, there is really no um, current feature that goes up and down a graphic. Like, if, for example, if I wanted the endpoint to be If I wanted the end point to be here, but then have these two points still there, that doesn't work. You're going to have to separate those into two graphics. Um, it just basically moves which the start and stop point to a new point, which um, generally is useful for when you're doing applique um, or something like that. Let's say we had an applique, and then we copied this applique, or we copied this curve, and one of the curves was, let's say, a fill. You notice that the fill's endpoint is here. And then I'm going to use the second one, let's say, as a satin. Um, and you probably have already experienced this issue. Um, we make this a satin. Uh, the satin starts here, which means you're going to have to draw another graphic to show it where to go after the fill is done. Um, but this one is much closer. And as a matter of fact, we want to make it right where we need it, which this is kind of a neat feature, which we've already had. We can add another point to the line, add new endpoint, but choose a point along curve. We can add a point for this satin right here. Now we have a point there, and it drew the curves nicely so that you won't notice that you've changed anything here. But what the what neats about it, what's neat about this is this is the endpoint of the of the satin or not the satin the fill, and we want to make that the new endpoint. So we go ahead, and make that the new endpoint, and now the new endpoint of the satin 
is where it needs to be. And that ends up being really cool because um, now we don't have to draw the extra path. Um, the menu would stop moving. I have a problem with this. Um, it will go and just do it the way we want. So it does the fill. And then the satin will start right where we move that endpoint. Now, in this case, there's two colors, so you'd have a color stop anyway, so it really wouldn't be that big a deal. But if it were the same color, that's where this becomes a good feature. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a transform function. Um, I have a heart here. I'm going to move the point down to the bottom because that's where I want um, the points to all repeat when I do the transform. I'm going to make an anchor at the top of the heart, two. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the heart by using the duplicate button. Now we have a heart the same size, but we're going to go change the size of it by actually choosing a scale using two points. We're going to choose the bottom point and the top point here. And we're just going to make it whatever size we want. And then here's where the fun happens. Um, transform essentially uh, places smaller hearts from the control points and the endpoints down to the control points and endpoints of the other graphic. So basically, this point, there will be several endpoints, depending on the number we choose, uh, drawn for the new graphics down. And the same thing will be for the control points. And what's neat about that is what happens is. Um, we go and we'll choose transform here. We get a dialog, transform dialog. And so in the transform dialog, we set the number of copies we want to do. And then we say preview. And what it does is it draws many copies of the heart down. Now, since we move the endpoint here, they're just going to go all and copy, and they're all going to go ahead and draw and stop here. And so you end up getting that interesting effect. Another thing that's neat about the transform is that since it's going ahead and actually copying, um, it's actually drawing points to these points. Um, if we did some neat other transformations, like let's say we rotated the heart, and we chose a transform. Um, let's use fewer copies because this is a lot. Um, let's do five. You notice that it also rotates it. So the hearts rotate in that case. Um, What's really neat about this, and you can play around with this, you can kind of go a little um, crazy, but you can do stuff like um, if I were to take a circle and make it into a square, um, I'll show you how you do that. You can make it, you can make it a circle into a square by just simply con uh, moving the control points. to um, make it a square. So in the case of this, I'm going to just line up the control points to each other for every other graphic. And we make it a square. Then when we do transform, it's actually going to go from a circle to a square, which is kind of fun. So you see there it's transformed it from a circle to a square. Now, if you do some other shapes, let's say we do a paisley shape, and we simply just want to copy a paisley shape down to just a much smaller paisley shape. You know, but we want them to be uniformly sized, and we didn't want to go ahead and do the scales and things like that. 
We just wanted to have it do a uniform size to that, for example. Uh, when you choose a transform, it ends up, it'll draw all the copies different sizes. And unfortunately right now, I don't have any kind of automatic um, positioning them so they're nice. So you would just simply choose them and move them till they look the way you want or the space the way you want. Something like this. So now we have a bunch of pages of shapes. Next feature I'd like to talk about is reversing stitch patterns. So if I was going to get add up stitch pattern to this curve, you notice that the stitch pattern is on this side of the curve. If I wanted to switch it, all I have to do is press flip stitch pattern. Now this button used to be reverse point order, which essentially does the same thing. But with reverse point order, it actually reverses the order of the points that you've drawn. And so the start and stop also flip. So if you notice on this, the stitch pattern uh, parameters, we have a new parameter called flip stitch pattern. So when that's on or off, it puts it on the other side. 